Hey, welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name is Jimmy. I'm Tim. I'm Rod. And today we're taking a look at a game put out by Mayday called Dead Man's Draw. This is actually a popular uh, electronic tablet game that they turned into an actual board game. And uh, thank you, Mayday, for sending us this game. We appreciate that as always. So we're going to dive into this game, and what you see in front of you is what you get in the box. So, Tim, do you want to tell us how complicated the rules are to this game? All right, so it's a very simple mechanic uh, to the game. So the the instructions was aren't are not very long. Most of the instruction is actually just describing the cards and the different abilities that the cards get. Um, the actual setup and gameplay is two pages right here. A uh, very simple game to actually um, get going. Uh, the only difficult part is the explaining of each one of the suits, but they give you reference cards for that, which is nice. So it tells you what the um, each character's special abilities or traits are, um, which you get at the beginning of the game. Um, they you get dealt these randomly. You get to pick one of the two. Um, then they also have the little reference sheets for the uh, units on the of uh, well, one of the card suits. Card types. Yeah. Uh, so that way you can each character can actually each player can actually look and see uh, what each one does as he puts it down. Because basically all you do is you, you put the card down and that automatically activates. And that's basically it. So the, the instructions are nice and quick and simple and uh, you can get going. After your first um, go, you'll basically have the game. Yeah. So Rod, do you want to talk about the actual components that come with the game? Sure. Now the one that doesn't come with the game is this right here. This is this is extra that we were that we were yeah, sent, right here. which is actually very nice. So if, if it's offered, I would buy it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the cards themselves, I mean, it's just like any other card game in the sense that uh, uh, the card stock on these uh, is is fine. It's thick. It uh, looks like it should hold up just fine. Um, the artwork looks good. Uh, I'm pleased with that. It gives that kind of rustic look to it. Uh, the uh, one of the things they did here, I guess, on this release is that one of them was uh, misprinted, so they sent you stickers to actually put back over it so that you'd have the uh, correct information on it. The um, the only the only thing that I would have any type of complaint about would be when it comes to components, is with these cards right here. When it comes to the trade cards, uh, what it does, it has these jewels listed that are telling you what your ability basically is or what you are. And the problem with that is you can, be, I can barely, and that's poor eyesight too, uh, can make it out what they are. Okay, so it's a little harder to see for some of us, especially as older folks. But uh, all in all, I mean, when it comes to components, I mean, it's a card game, the box itself is, a, you know, it's nice and thick and uh, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice little setup, what they have. So let's talk about how you actually play Dead Man's Draw. Uh, like Tim said at the beginning of the game, you're going to get some uh, special character cards. And so these character cards, uh, you get dealt two and you get to pick one of the two. And so then they have these the explanation on this card so you can actually go through and see what that special ability does. And then going in turn, you're actually just going to draw out of the Dead Man's deck. And so on your turn, almost in essence, kind of like uh, Blackjack or 21, you're going to go until you want to quit or or go until you bust and so the game is very simple and that if you ever draw two of the same kind like here are two uh, Krakens if you drew those then you would be out and so any cards that are on the table at that point you would lose there are exceptions to that like if you have the anchor uh, and that could change where you could be able to do things or maybe special abilities but in essence if you ever draw two of the same kind then uh, your turn is over so each one of these cards get to do different things so like the, uh, the anchor you could take what's on the table already get it off there's a uh, one card that helps you see into the future so you get to see what the next card is so you can decide whether or not you want to keep going or pull off there's a mermaid where you can get to duplicate uh, another power that a different card has um, the the chest and the key do something at the end so each one of these cards has a, a different ability that it has so that's a lot of fun because you're able to you're not just pulling a card and saying okay you know I quit but you're actually getting all of these cards can interact with each other so that's the flavor of game that's the fun of the game 
And one thing that I'll just say here, because of these abilities here and the traits that you have, the, what do you call it, the, the power of the game can shift or change dramatically yeah. in one turn. So you have one guy that's totally killing it, and you're like, well, he's going to win. He's got all the high numbers, whatever. And then you go around, and then somebody else could totally take that back from them. Sure. So, and that's also another feature is each one of these cards has a number on the top. And so you're trying to get the highest number of each suit into your hand. And so then that's how your points are added up at the end of the game. So, Okay, so do you guys want to talk about what you think about the game, how it played, anything like that? Uh, the the one thing that, that was kind of bothered me about the game was that it is so luck driven, <laughs> basically because it's all based on the cards. Um, so it it hurts on trying to have like a strategy. So this is more a I would classify it as a party game mm -hmm. because of that because there is so much luck involved. But there is some strategy to it. Don't get me wrong, but mostly it's a luck game. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that hundred percent. I mean, I think the. the I, I guess we have to look at the game for what it is. It's a light game, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, totally. it, it definitely is a party game, so we can't look at it as, as you know, I don't want to downgrade it because it doesn't have much strategy in it because it is just a party game. So this is a game that I know that my oldest son thought was great. He's into magic. He likes that. So he likes the cards and having to decipher what they're going to do and how they, they give abilities, that type of stuff. So he likes those type of games. So he loved the game. Um, so when, when I do get my rating on this, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely just giving it as a party game rating, um, and that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think it plays fast. Like they say, 10 to 15 minutes. So it's meant to be play quick. Oh, I lost. Let's do it again and see. So I think the it, it totally plays into the theme of this pirate, you know, just push your luck. You know, that's what it is. It's a push your luck game. So you're trying to see how far you can go, and will I go one more time? I don't know. It paid off, or it totally ruined me, that kind of thing. And so that's that's where the fun of the game comes in with it, just drawing, you know, trying to see what you're going to get next. So, all right, ready to do our review? Yeah, totally. All right. So. All right, so at the end of our reviews, we like to give a one-die rating. Green means go buy this game and add it to your collection. White means maybe you wouldn't buy it, but you definitely play it. And then red means uh, don't buy it and don't play it because you hate it. So uh, so who wants to start? You want to tell us what you would give this game? All right, I would give this game a, a white die uh, because I would play it if it's out because mo most likely that's you're, you're in a party setting um, or you just have a large group of people. Uh, it only plays four players, though. Uh, so I would play it if it's on the table. Uh, it's not my style of game, uh, with it being so luck driven. Even though it does have some strategy with the traits, but it being not my style of game, I wouldn't actually purchase it. I'll give this one a green. I like I like the the play, just how fast it plays. So you can play this game a whole bunch. This would be a ga great game to add to your collection if you want to maybe do something in between. So somebody's setting up another game that's a little bit heavier, you want to do this. The fact that you can play two players with this game and it plays really well fits for a lot of people. This could be a game that I could pull out and play with my wife and we can play a couple games really quick and so it's not a big deal. You're not invested a whole lot if you played it forever and then you lost or they beat you and it was luck driven like that would drive me nuts but because it's so it plays so fast I don't know I think it's a good one to have on the shelf uh, I also would uh, give it a green and I'm not big party game fans but as party games go I do like the theme and it sticks to the theme which is nice uh, it's quick and I do enjoy that it's easy to teach somebody how to play it which is a key, and then, like you're saying, the wives would play and other people would play because it's just not that difficult. And um, I had fun playing as a group. I mean, I was around good people when I did it, yeah. but uh, I had fun playing it. So that's that's the key to the game. And I'm sh the price point's good. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's our review of Dead Man's Draw. Um, check it out online. Go to your local game store and see if you want to pick it up. You can visit our website to check out more reviews. BoardGameCloset.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.